Hello everybody and welcome back to the Vintage Workshop. My name is Jeff. Uh, guys, thanks all for tuning in. Uh, this is going to sound like a YouTube Anonymous uh, video here, but uh, it's been 10 months since my last video. Uh, this was a crazy year. I'm not going to spend a lot of time boring you with it, but uh, I got sick uh, right after my last video working on the uh, Snowflake uh, bandsaw and uh, spent a lot of time back and forth with the doctor uh, in and out of the pulmonologist office. Got some lung problems dealing with them. I uh, got a new mask, a new filtration unit, head unit, which you guys will be seeing in upcoming videos. Uh, to make a long story short, uh, certainly on the road to recovery, and I don't want to dwell on it, but I just want to let you know uh, that I didn't just disappear on you. Uh, as you can see right where I'm sitting, there is a new acquisition for the workshop. Uh, this is a 1977 Martin T17 sliding table saw, and uh, I'm really excited to have it. Uh, I went uh, quite a long time without even looking for uh, new machines. The, the simple truth is that I share a similar problem to quite a few of my buddies whose channels you probably watch, uh, Keith Rucker, Mike Wiggins, Backyard Machine Shop. Uh, we all have the same problem. We can't seem to stop acquiring machines uh, that are old that need uh, rescuing. Well, this was another uh, one of those. And uh, just about two weeks ago, I was perusing through the Craigslist uh, for really the first time in a long time. I'm not even sure uh, what caught my eye with this because I wasn't even looking for a saw. I was actually looking for something else. And uh, I saw this saw for sale. Uh, it was uh, not well listed. Uh, it wasn't uh, called out by its name or anything. And for those of you who don't know, Martin sliding table saws are uh, highly sought after. They're pretty much the pinnacle uh, or at the top. I don't want to say they're the very best, but they're they're seriously thought of as uh, fantastic saws. This particular one is not just a cabinet saw. The T17 uh, is uh, something of particular interest to me because uh, it is designed as a hardwood saw as well as a panel saw uh, up to a certain amount. It's not designed to take a 4 foot by 10 foot or 5 foot by 12 foot sheet of plywood and process it up on the table all at once. It's got a much shorter stroke. Uh, maximum cross-cutting capacity with this is 42 inches. But what the heck? 42 inches, that's a lot for a guy like me. That covers cross-cutting entire tables. Uh, if you're making coffee tables and furniture, uh, something that I do at least half the time, uh, this is the saw for that. It also handles, uh, I believe I read that it'll take up to an 18-inch blade, but uh, and I think there's room for it in there. But uh, they list up to 16 inch blade and with a 16 inch blade it has almost almost a 6 inch depth of cut so it's got a serious serious hardwood capacity I've recently purchased a, a brand new blade for it uh, which was a forest woodworker 2 uh, 14 inch blade this saw has got an inch and a quarter arbor so I wanted to uh, start out with a new blade when I bought the saw and I'll show you guys the kit that came with it uh, the previous owner gave me a box with 32 blades that fit this saw in it as well as a really nice 2 inch uh, Amana stacked dado head. Uh, this saw came with, uh, it comes two versions uh, with regards to the arbor. You can get the straight, a standard saw arbor and it also has a, a dado arbor which extends it out for a 2 inch arbor, uh, 2 inch dado. And uh, this saw has the two inch dado arbor, which is just a really, really, really nice, nice feature to have on any saw. Uh, and uh, that gives me the ability to either run a straight blade in it or uh, a dado head in it, or they even have like molding heads and stuff like that. I won't use it that way, uh, but it is capable. So uh, what I, I, I want to tell you right up front, I have learned a lot about this saw since acquiring it up until that point I never really spent too much time other than general reading over the years on the internet about these saws and how great and wonderful they were I never really had space to put it in my shop uh, and as you can see I kind of shoehorned this one in here uh, I had to move a lot of machines which are all over on the other side which I'll show you in a minute just to get it over here it was quite uh, the, the game of uh, cast iron Tetris just to move it over here but got it in place I had to put it on an angle uh, I got my you know, wood wood burning stove in the center of the shop, and the uh, swing arm uh, just barely clears it. But I got it in a position where I think it's going to work out. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I want to put it through its paces. 
Uh, I've got a cabinet job coming up, which you guys are going to get a chance to see. I've got a couple of vanities uh, that I need to build, an 8-footer and a 54-inch uh, one, both for the same master uh, bedroom, so master bathroom. So uh, we'll be doing that in an upcoming videos. And uh, why don't I go ahead and bring you in a little closer, and I'll just share with you some of the features that are really neat about this saw, uh, which set it apart from some of the other sliding saws out there. So here's the front of the saw up close uh, so that you guys can see everything. Uh, the electrical control panels right here, I already had to do uh, a little bit of repair work in there. Firing up the saw, it wouldn't stay contacted. The blade would uh, basically stop as soon as I took my finger off the start button. Uh, Open it up, it was completely filled with sawdust. Uh, there were some contacts that had some uh, you know, corrosion type uh, arcs and stuff like that on them. I took it apart, cleaned it up. I didn't do that on camera. I'm not really uh, comfortable doing electronic stuff. Uh, just to listen to all the brain damage that you get in the comment sections from guys. So I did that off camera, cleaned it all up, got the saw running. Uh, you have two sets of controls. Uh, this is the main saw blade uh, for uh, starting the main saw. These controls over here start a scoring saw. This saw does have a scoring saw, which is a much smaller saw, uh, rotating in opposite direction of the main saw, uh, basically used for sheet goods. Uh, right now I'm not going to be running with a scoring saw. Uh, this did not come with it. They weren't using it. Uh, I've heard really good things about these saws cutting great without one. So unless I run into a situation where I'm cutting some material that absolutely needs it, uh, the Forest Woodworker 2 blade has always done really good by me. And I've also got uh, panel blades as well as ripping blades uh, that I've got to get repaired. But uh, once I do, I'm guessing that with the arsenal of blades that I can use on this saw, I don't really need the scoring saw. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you this control here. This uh, right here is the tilting mechanism and also the elevation mechanism. And what it has is the ability to turn from 0 to 45 degrees very quickly. You don't have to go around 15 times like you do on some saws. Uh, you turn it with those three little hand wheels around the perimeter and uh, it very quickly tilts. And they have incremental degree uh, stops on here. Every one degree is marked out on the wheel. So if you need a precision uh, angle, you can get really close uh, with this. And then there's a couple of buttons under here which you really can't see, which you can dial it in exactly with. So really, really neat adjustments on this. Uh, the Germans were very serious about their engineering when they designed this. Uh, this particular handle right here is the elevation for the blade up and down. Now with a 16 inch blade, uh, the saw blade will stick out the top by three inches. I think you gotta drop down to like a, uh, a 12 inch blade before it's near the, the top of the surface. I don't really care about that. I'm the only person running out here. Uh, so let's see. All right, let me move you in onto the fence. So one of the finer qualities that I've read about these saws, and I've already had an opportunity to experience it just a little bit, are the uh, rip fences that come with them. Uh, what Martin did is this is very much like the uh, old Unisaws, but I'm not comparing them. Uh, this is a large chunk of machined aluminum that is machined to fit very well uh, with, the, uh, with the fence mechanism, the T-square mechanism. And this handle right back here, which I'm showing you, this is what locks it in place. You can slide this up and down just with a simple loosening up of this. And this can move into different positions if you're doing certain kinds of uh, joinery cuts or something like that. Uh, you can also mount different jigs and fixtures on this fence very easily with the way it's set up and the way it's uh, fixtured on. Uh, one of the super, super nice features that I've uh, come to learn very quickly about this is the way that this, uh, the T-square, uh, basically works just like, you know, uh, like a Biesemeyer style fence, except it's like a Biesemeyer st uh, style fence on steroids. It moves back and forth and there are ball bearings underneath there. Mine are kind of gunked up. I don't think this guy uh, who owned it uh, in, the, in the waning years of uh, having it, uh, did a real good job of maintaining things. It sounds like they're squeaking a little. I have not physically removed this yet because it requires taking it apart, but I'm going to take this apart and check it out. There's some bearing slides that are under here, which make this really, I've seen some videos of guys who, uh, one in particular where the guy restored this, and this thing just moves across the tabletop effortlessly. Uh, and uh, it has a micro adjust feature. So once you lock it in place, there's a pointer just like any saw that points directly where you're at, but this little button, this little knob right here, this silver knob, you can turn this and fine tune the adjustment until you're exactly on whatever line you need to be on. So really, really an impressive saw, and I mean, I already tested it, it is locked dead nuts parallel to the saw blade, so in that regard, very well made. 
So, uh, the entire top is cast iron. Uh, this is the extended version of the saw. It has a 50 inch rip capacity. Uh, they make them in 43 inch and 50 uh, inch versions. And what, uh, what you're looking at is the, uh, you know, the full width of the main uh, top of the saw. These guys were literally using it like a coaster. There are rings from Coke cans, and you can see there are the original uh, uh, marks from the, uh, from the uh, planer of how it was uh, originally planed flat and everything, and it's still in good shape. It's just that you could kind of see right there paint cans, and uh, when I got there to look at it, they had like 20 or 30 different coffee cups and stuff all over it. So what it needs is a little TLC, and, and, and literally I'm going to take this, and I'm going to just get it cleaned up. I need to get it working right away. My other saw is still perfectly fine, but I had to move it out of the way to get it in here. So uh, I'm going to give it a good clean up. We're going to clean up the top and uh, get this thing, uh, get the bearings all uh, oiled or changed in, uh, on the uh, fence and uh, run it through its paces. Another interesting and unique feature on this saw is it is belt drive, uh, but you have three different speed options to run with the saw. You got 2800 RPMs as you're seeing in this sign, 4000 RPMs, and then 5500 RPMs. Uh, and I will be uh, running in it. And it does recommend to, uh, in most instances for most materials, running it in the middle zone, which is 4000, and that's how I've got it set up. But I thought that was unique for me personally uh, in my 30 years of woodworking. This is the first table saw that I have personally ever owned that had speed change options uh, with regards to uh, the pulleys. So the main reason why I bought this saw is this guy right here. This is a sliding table that is mounted to the side of the table. It runs on a carrier beam uh, and this beam gives it the ability to work in two different manners. Right now I've got it set up in uh, basically front loader mode which means I'm loading the stock in front of the fence. This is a hold down clamp so you can extend uh, whatever length you can put on the saw out to the left. Uh, clamp it down nice and square to the blade or any angle that you so desire. There are incremental angles for the cross cut uh, fence beam to uh, be mounted anywhere from 0 up to 45 degrees and you could even go past that if you want. Uh, and uh, pivots right on this point right here and it's all machined so that if you lock it down on the lines, I mean it's almost dead nuts every time and a little bit of small adjustment after a test cut and you're, you know, you're ready to go. So miters, etc are all real easy to do, especially on really long stock. So the way this works is that this entire table is mounted on the V-ways, much like a, a metalworking lathe, top and bottom, and they're clamped together like so. So it's a very smooth action with this sliding table saw. And this carrier beam uh, can be adjusted so that it slides in any increment you want so that you can lengthen the front loading capacity of this or take this fence and mount it around back in this hole here and then push through uh, basically mounting it the other way so you have you know within the range of the saw you have a real good ability to move this back and forth and uh, and get you know lengthy cross cuts uh, without messing around with some little small miter. So one of the features that I didn't mention before is uh, as you're looking at that cross cut fence uh, which is also a miter fence. One of the really nice uh, setups on it is, let me see if I can zoom in on it here for you, is that it is completely set up with a scale and uh, this particular saw is set up with inch scales uh, because it is made for America and uh, as you can see that is a stop right there. There's another one down at the far end of the beam right there and you could set these stops up at whatever width you need and uh, once you have that set up and zeroed out to the saw blade, uh, it's very accurate for cross-cutting and uh, making repetitive cuts, whether it's in panels or boards or whatever. So a really nice feature. And another nice thing, I'm going to zoom out here and show you down at the end. It's not limited. This, this fence has uh, uh, all the way out to 72 inches, but it also contains with unlocking right here. Uh, you've got a little twist knob here, and it's got another beam inside, which will pull out all the way. And this thing gives you, a, you know, stoppable crosscut capacity out uh, past 12 feet. So uh, pretty, pretty impressive capacities. 
Now, some of the things that are wrong with the saw are basically mostly cosmetic. I'll zoom in here and kind of show you. Uh, these black knobs that are sitting on the top, uh, better look at one like right there. Every one of them is broken, uh, so they've been uh, you know roughly handled over the years. It is a 41-year-old saw, but uh, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, this one down here on the back door, uh, which you're looking at, that black star handle, uh, that's brand new. I literally got that in the mail yesterday. Uh, I didn't, you can't really tell online when you're ordering things what they look like, uh, but that's a metric 10 millimeter uh, unit. And uh, basically I ordered one just to kind of see all these different, uh, I, I have four broken knobs. Uh, I'll order them online and get them replaced so I have better hand grip on all of them. And uh, I already redid the electric and got it fired up. So uh, that's the new saw that's in there. I went ahead and cleaned it up, cleaned it up with acetone, took the, uh, the uh, wax uh, coating on there. And uh, let's uh, get the saw plugged in, and I'll give you guys a chance to see how it runs. So this saw from Martin uh, gets uh, three possible motors. Uh, I, I could be remembering it wrong, but they've got a 4.5 horsepower, a 6.3 horsepower, and a 7.5 horsepower. This saw is the 7.5 horsepower saw. So right now I've got it hooked up to the big phase converter, which is the 20 horse. I had it originally hooked up to the uh, 10 horsepower motor. Uh, phase converter and uh, it did start but it was a little bit slower to start so I, uh, I d decided to wire it to run uh, with the bigger phase converter. So uh, new blades in, everything's clear of the blade. There she goes. The first time I started it, the new blade. Runs good, very smooth, not a lot of vibration. Uh, I did uh, this oil takes uh, this saw takes oil for lubrication, so I went ahead and uh, went through the maintenance schedule on it. Uh, a couple of guys from the OWWM forum, uh, thanks Joe, thanks Tyler. They sent me some uh, information that they had on this particular saw uh, brochure wise, which covers the maintenance and everything. And I made uh, Xerox copies of the PDF file that they sent me, uh, and that helps a lot with knowing uh, the correct lubrication to use as well as all the different points of uh, lubrication and I'm using the same oil gun uh, that I use on the uh, the uh, Kearney and Trekker vertical head uh, which also is, uh, it's got grease circs on it but it doesn't take grease, it takes oil. So kind of in reverse order because I had to get everything out of the way, you can kind of see the gigantic corridor that I needed to uh, get this uh, table saw in over to the far side away from the door. Uh, the sliding saw, the sliding part of the saw on the side uh, that would be the left side of the saw. That all folds down. So I folded that down, took the crosscut beam off, and basically with a pallet jack ran it right through this area. So all the machines that were uh, habitating this area, the joiner, and I've got the big uh, Y30 snowflake bandsaw which is still under construction because I haven't touched it since the last video that you guys saw on it. All of this stuff, and I'll try to walk and uh, try to be as less moving as I can. Uh, you know, here's all the parts. Uh, to the saw that I moved over here and uh, as you can see as I span around here I'll set the camera down uh, we've got everything got the old uh, uh, it's not you know old but it's you know old now is the uh, Powermatic 66 table saw that just got replaced and uh, my big joiner and uh, parts all over the floor for the uh, snowflake restoration so I've got to go ahead and get all this stuff back into position so that I can utilize this side of the shop as my cutting station uh, for the upcoming job. So uh, let's get that done.
All right, gang. If you made it this far, good for you. You made it further than most. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot if you're a subscriber, and if you're not, please hit that little button. Don't forget to hit that little reminder, and uh, there's going to be a lot more videos coming this, uh, this winter and moving forward into next year. So uh, appreciate you watching. Thanks again.